Hey friends, my name is Al or Lil Starnard and welcome to today's episode of Make It Gay. This video was filmed over the span of three days in which I painted my biggest piece ever. Before we get started though, I want to thank Vizwin for sending me this gorgeous easel. Make sure you keep listening to find out how you could win a super nice tabletop easel later. So I said that this is my biggest piece ever uh, and that's like that's mostly true. Um, I have worked probably about this big before, but that was back in high school on paper instead of canvas. And I put about 5% effort in back then. Um, so I don't think it counts. I don't think that counts. We're just gonna go with that this, that this is my biggest piece ever, okay? Okay, so obviously the sketch is done. Um, I did that off camera because I didn't feel like setting up all the filming equipment just to do a really quick sketch. And also, I uh, I was doing it on the floor, hunched over like a goblin, so it really wouldn't have been great viewing material anyways. I did a grid method to do the sketch. Um, I just put the picture that I wanted into Photoshop, put it at the same dimensions as the canvas, and then I did a grid every, I did a two by two inch grid, and then I drew a two by two inch grid on my canvas, and then just did the sketch by grid, which was like, thank God I did. I cannot draw a large scale, and if I had tried to do it without the grid, I probably would have taken like four tries, um, but I did it in one go, so that was good. So now I just have to actually do the painting, which is really scary. I'm really scared. Obviously I've never done anything of this size and I genuinely just do not know what to expect. First of all, first of all, I really, really, really love the sketch. I'm really happy with how the sketch came out. So doing like doing the painting means possibly ruining the sketch, which I don't want to do. <laughs> Two, I'm really, really scared to mess up the easel. It's really pretty and I really love it. And I'm a messy painter. And eventually the easel has to get messed up, but I don't want it to be now. <laughs> and then also, I I don't know how long it's gonna take. I have a time limit, I have a window that I am working in, and I have no idea how some how long something this big is gonna take, and I am worried. I'm worried about it. So clearly I chose to paint the classic piece, The Fisherman and the Siren, but I made it gay. I really want to make some more um mulama make it gaze because my ratio is honestly pretty whack. I think there's only one like gay men piece, <laughs> but I keep picking pieces that have gorgeous, like gorgeous women. And I don't want to change them or sacrifice them for the making it gay. For this one, I really didn't want to change like the beautiful silhouette that the mermaid makes with her stomach and her breast. It's literally so gorgeous. I didn't want to sacrifice that. So um, they, they had to both be women, you know? Which, you know, I we're not gonna get into the specifics of gender identity and sexuality, but I know people don't have to necessarily be like, but sometimes to make it easier to read in, you know, in the paintings, it's easier to go with like binary obvious choices. Um, I know that's not inclusive. I'm working on it. So let's get into the history. The Fisherman and the Siren was painted by Frederick Layton in 1856 and completed in 1858, and it's an oil on canvas. Lane was a hugely respected artist, and at only 48, he was elected president of the Royal Academy of the Arts, which I think was in London. Um, this painting is one of his early works. He was about 26 years old when he started the painting. The piece is inspired by a poem by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe called The Fisherman, which tells the story of a mermaid who lures a fisherman to his death in her waters as revenge for catching her fish or her children. In the poem, the mermaid tells him, like, man, if you could see how sick it is down here, like, you'd want to stay here forever too, TBH, which I <laughs> I love. I love the vibe. I love the flow and the dialogue of the poem. And while it's not imagery heavy, the imagery it does evoke is so beautiful. There are quite a few interpretations and translations of the poem, but I love the last few lines of one specific translation. Half drew she him and half sank he, and there again was seen. Um, I love the reminder that the fisherman is kind of also at fault here, but also the idea that like he's going willingly for this beautiful woman. He's a bit of a simp. It's not just her forcing him into the water. I really like that. I'm going to leave a link in the description of the poem so you can check it out if you want to. I highly recommend. You can definitely read that longing and lust between the characters in Leighton's painting that is evoked in those last few lines. In my research, I kind of got the idea that people liked Leighton's painting so much because he made all the people super hot and I guess his audience was into that. I don't blame him. Um, the mermaid, though her back is mainly to us and we can't see her face, is clearly very beautiful, but so is the fisherman. And you can really like feel and see the charge and lust between the fisherman and the mermaid. He's got his arms out, like, like take me. Um, his body language is very open. He's like, you know, willing. I think Leighton really is evoking the power of those last few lines and you can really like feel the energy and seduction and lust between them. 
I'm, I'm reading a script, so I can't, I was very reactive, but I was actively researching the painting, the, you know, the history as I was writing it. And literally as I wrote that line, I had read that when he exhibited it for the first time at the Royal Academy, he actually displayed the piece with those final lines. Um, half drew she him, half sank he in, and never more was seen. And I just cannot believe, I'm still really hyped about this. I can't believe I interpreted the painting so well. Like, I'm so proud of myself. I normally suck at interpreting art and stuff like that. So the fact that I liked those lines enough to pull them out myself and compared it to the painting, and it turns out that that's what the original inspiration was, I'm giving myself a pat on the back. That's awesome. But yeah, that's a real quick analysis on the painting. I really like the original and I'm not sure that I'm too familiar with any of Leighton's other work, but I'm definitely going to look into his stuff more because I love his classic style and the details and his colors. And I would love to like see more of what he does and maybe do some more studies. We'll see. Vizwin sent me this amazing, beautiful Vizwin heavy duty, extra large H frame easel. Let me tell you guys, She's a beauty, okay? She's perfect, I love her. This thing can hold up to like an 80 inch easel. Like, oh my God, that's huge. It has a great load carrying capacity. And like I said, it can hold huge canvases. So you can easily work on a really large scale with like no issues, which is amazing. The easel is made of solid beech wood. So it's super stable and it feels really strong. Like I was like wiggling it and like, like it feels so it feels i don't know it feels so high quality and it has wheels on the bottom so it's super easy to move around and to adjust but it doesn't like move when you lean against it which i tend to do when i'm painting um and all four wheels lock to make it super secure which is really nice the easel is also like super adjustable. Obviously the bottom raises and lowers, so it was super comfortable to stand and sit while using it. It can also lean all the way back to hold your canvas horizontally, which is awesome. So you can even work with like fluid mediums. So cool. I've never seen the easel do that. Like seriously, I feel like a real like professional artist. <laughs> it's so nice. This might be one of the nicest things that I own, honestly. It's so beautiful. Thanks again to Vizwin. Make sure you guys check the link in the description to learn more about them. Also, Vizwin is very nicely sponsoring little giveaway for you guys if you guys want to learn more about how you can win a nice tabletop easel go over to my instagram and find that post um so it is still the first day <sighs> tomorrow is halloween so i'll probably be spending tonight and all of tomorrow like prepping for that doing last minute decorations so i think i think i'm done for the day painting i might do a little bit more but my phone's almost dead so we'll see my filming has been super like um, sporadic and random because I've been really struggling. Um, I don't want to film the entire process because that's going to be so much footage. And every time I do film, I'm like doing really, really poorly. So I'll like turn it off and then I'll get work done and I'll get so focused on working that I'm really like, oh, I should, I should film a little bit maybe. And then I start on another area and then it looks really bad and then I turn the camera off again. Especially because things are taking multiple layers. So like I'll turn the camera on and I'll start with like my first layer but the first layer will look really bad so like it's been a mess it's it's been a mess i started with like the watery like first layer but it just wasn't really doing anything there was no point so i decided against that by the way i did i've already i spilled my palette like my palette fell paint down multiple times so the easel's already ruined there's paint on the easel already i've given up hope but anyways, the, the watery layer didn't work. So I went right into it and oh my God, I needed to warm up. It was looking so bad. I was genuinely worried that I was going to have a terrible painting. I was really, really stressed. I'm not in love with how it's looking. I haven't done detail and like major shadow and highlights yet. So we mainly got like mid tones, like still work needs to be done, but like her face is like mainly there. Um, and that worries me because I don't love it. <laughs> I don't love it. I've mainly just been having trouble like with the paints themselves. Like I cannot mix for the life of me. I cannot mix the colors that I want. I don't know what's happening, but like I cannot mix the right colors, which usually is not a problem for me. And also I feel like the paint is like looking cheap. Like, I don't know. I've been, it's been like weird on the canvas. I don't know if it's because I've been, I haven't painted on untreated canvas in a while because normally I either gesso it or I use like panel and I don't work on canvas. So I don't know if I'm just not used to it anymore, but it feels like gross, not gonna, like it's tacky and like weird. But I think also I was kind of just in my head picturing it being like oils and acrylic is not like oils. Um, so I don't know. But compared to how it was going like right in the beginning when I was doing her face and how bad like genuinely like i was so worried i was like i wanted to throw up i was so worried based on like compared to that i think it's looking really good i think i've kind of got the groove of you know what i'm doing 
you know, it could be worse. I'm not, I'm, I'm hoping I can pull it all together in the end, but <sighs> I don't know. I definitely had some trouble with this piece. Normally it takes me a bit to get used to a piece and get warmed up and then it all comes really easily to me or at least I get in like the zone and the process goes pretty smoothly, but, but not this time. No part of this painting came easily to me. I struggled on every corner, I questioned every choice, I had to repaint every element at least twice, not to mention the amount of times that I bumped into things, my palette fell down, paint, paint down like three times, it was a mess. Um, I kept telling myself that pretty much everything about this piece was out of my element and new to me so of course it wasn't going to come like naturally to me but even knowing that I still got super impatient with myself and had really high expectations which of course I couldn't meet and I don't know I was I was frustrated it was very difficult I really really struggled mixing my colors which I normally really enjoy doing and I don't really struggle with and it really started making me truly consider my palette, which is something I don't think I've ever done before. I've never really put thought into the colors that I use when it comes to acrylic. I just use whatever I have available to me, which is usually like tubes from Christmas and stuff, so they're not colors that I've chosen, and I never really cared or thought that it mattered. But this piece and like the struggling that I went through to mix my colors really made me start thinking about it, and I think I want to do like research about colors and take a trip to the store to really carefully pick out a new palette for myself. I think that would be really fun. And, you know, I really want to consider like what, what colors I need and what kind of art that I want to produce. I don't know. I think that would be fun. I think that would be a good thing to do. <laughs> I realized about halfway through that the Fisherwoman's boob anatomy is off. There's something like really weird and off about it. I honestly don't know what it is, but the nipple and the boob look so good that I, I genuinely did not want to risk trying again because I was so, so happy with how it turned out. Like I'm thrilled with how it looks. And so I didn't, I didn't want to risk doing it again. Also, TBH, if the great masters were allowed to not understand anatomy, like, come on, you've seen those, you've seen those creepy babies. You've seen Michelangelo. He's never seen a woman. It just looks like a muscular man with weird boobs on the pecs. They don't know how to do anatomy, so I don't have to know how to either, maybe, possibly. You know what I, you know? That's, that's my logic. <laughs> it bugged me a lot while painting, and even now that I'm done, I keep looking back at it and feeling very confused and conflicted. Um, I don't know. I think the boob is just gonna haunt me forever, and I just have to accept that. Throughout this piece, I definitely realized that painting really pale skin is hard it's it's hard the mermaid really gave me like so so much trouble i had to paint her skin at least at least four times like completely repaint her completely everything about her like four times it was so annoying and it was hard to get a light enough color for the highlights because she was so pale and every time i remixed the light color it was usually like a little too pink a little too yellow which meant i had to go over the entirety of her skin again to match the shade because i kept it was awful it was torture um and like the shadows were in the piece, they're pretty harsh shadows, but it transitioning between that really, really light and that, that shadow was really hard. And it was, I didn't want it to be a soft gradient because it is a harsh shadow, but it was just so hard to make it not look weirdly dark. And her skin kept looking like lumpy because the paint was dry. So I couldn't get a soft blend in the lighter areas, just like the different, you know, shades in her skin. So any slight shading at all looked like super harsh, which made her look weird and lumpy. It was really frustrating and when I was doing her skin, that was one of the points that I was like, oh my god, this painting is going to turn out terrible. While I low-key hated working on the piece, I'm pretty sure it's something that I really, really want to keep working on. Even though it was, oh my god, it was awful. My back hurt. It used so much paint. Like, if you regularly paint big things on a regular basis, you must go through so much paint. I went through so much paint. It was ridiculous. It took so long. There were a lot of, there were a lot of downsides to working on a big canvas. Um, but but it was weirdly like so much more rewarding than a small piece. Normally with like smaller canvases, I spend like a few hours on them and they usually come out good, but like in the same way that all of my pieces are like kind of good and that gets kind of boring. And then they just get stacked up in my closet. But this process was so much more like intimate, like spending days on the same painting, having so much room for so much detail, spending hours on just the same area, attempting it multiple times, really truly considering the painting, I, the paint that I'm mixing, going through like a roller coaster of emotions with it. And then in the end, you get something that means so much more than a quick little portrait on a small canvas that I make every other week. 
This process was weirdly transformative for me, which I feel a little ridiculous saying, but it was. It was weirdly, like I learned a lot about myself as an artist. And I was also kind of exposed to a lot of things that I normally kind of hide myself from as an artist. So even though it was super scary and intimidating and hard and tiring, I definitely think painting large scale is so much more worth it. And I definitely want to keep doing it. Don't get me wrong, um, painting on small canvas is great too. I'm not saying it's not or that large is objectively better, but because it was like a new first experience for me, it was like weirdly like magical and I definitely see the benefits and that they outweigh the cost. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think from now on, I'm going to research the pieces I make gay before I actually start working on the piece. I really struggled with mixing my colors, and I think if I maybe knew Layton's palette and the colors he used, I would have had a much easier time. I really struggled with mixing colors, which I almost never do. It took forever to figure out skin tones, which was basically where I started on the piece. So I kind of started at a low point, which put me in a more negative headspace, which made continuing the piece a bit harder. I have very mixed feelings about the final result. I think I just had wildly high expectations for myself, so any tiny little flaw really stands out to me. But I don't know, I'm just not thrilled with the results. At the same time though, I keep staring at it and like feeling super proud of myself. And there are definitely parts of the piece that I absolutely adore, like the mermaid's hair I think turned out super well, the fisherwoman's skirt. I, I don't know, I don't know. I just feel like really torn about it. I'm very confused. Maybe I'll have a clear idea of my feelings once I've had some time apart from it. Hopefully, I'm hoping. There are definitely places that I could improve and I definitely learned a lot from this piece. I definitely need to work on painting bodies and stuff, but also I've learned that like, I'm better at a lot of other things than I thought I was. I did a pretty good job with all the fabric and the rocks in the background, which I really thought I was gonna fail completely. Um, so maybe I'm capable of more than I know, but I don't know. I like it, but I don't. I think my next goal in terms of painting is to do something of this magnitude, but to do an original piece, because I think my feelings about the final result of an original piece will be much easier to understand than a recreation of something. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, there's the painting. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Vizwin, for sending this beautiful easel. If you guys like the video, let me know by liking, subscribing, maybe even leave a comment. I'd love to know if you guys have any critiques on this piece. It might help me figure out my own feelings better. <laughs> Anyways, go wash your dishes, watch some TV, and go do some art.